In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between a VA panel and a QD OLED panel. And for this comparison, I'll be using two very similar yet very different ultra-wide gaming monitors from MSI. The 342C with a QD OLED panel and the 343CQR with a VA panel. These two monitors have very similar specs on paper. Uh, they're both 34-inch ultra-wide Quad HD monitors. Uh, one has 175 hertz refresh rate, the other one 165 hertz, which isn't really a difference. And both have a much better contrast than the typical IPS panel. So both are very clearly aimed at gaming and other types of content consumption. But since they do have very different panels in terms of overall experience, they're actually worlds apart. So let's compare the two and let's figure out which one might be the best fit for you. Let's begin. The MSI 342C uses the same QD OLED panel from Samsung that's in a lot of QD OLED monitors already, uh, like the Alienware AW3423DW, for example, that I reviewed a while ago. The MSI comes with a very different exterior and includes some extras like a reactive RGB bar at the front, but that's just on the outside. The brands have very limited influence on how the actual QD OLED panel behaves, uh, pretty much like uh, most monitors that have an LED LG OLED panel will behave more or less the same. And unless a brand does something specifically strange, it is very hard to mess up an OLED monitor. VA monitors, on the other hand, vary a lot more in terms of performance, and you have really good VA monitors and you have absolutely terrible ones. So you do need to be a bit more careful when picking a VA panel. Now, luckily the 343CQR that I was testing for this video is a pretty good example of a good VA monitor that you actually want to consider. And it was only fair to pick a pretty good VA to compete with an OLED panel. But let's put these two monitors side by side and see how well they perform. Brightness is one area where OLED is traditionally a bit weaker, and then especially so if you have a bright scene that is filling most of the screen. In SDR mode, so this would be any sort of regular PC use, uh, the QD OLED only hit 242 nits, while the VA panel hit a nicer 356 nits. Generally speaking, getting at least 300 nits is nice if you have a very bright room, but because the QD OLED has much better black values than a VA panel, it doesn't feel as dim as 250 nits would look like on an LCD panel. So unless your room is extremely bright, with lots of direct sunlight, I don't think you should worry about the lower brightness of an OLED or of an QD OLED panel. In HDR mode, however, the QD OLED wins easily. It has a much higher peak brightness of just over 1000 nits, and in typical HDR content like movies or games, you can usually expect somewhere between 600 and 800 nits depending on the scene. Meanwhile, the VA panel barely goes over 400 nits with about 380 to 400 nits in a typical HDR content. Now, both VA and OLED are supposed to offer very good contrast, but if you have them side by side, it isn't even close. So VA's typical contrast is about 3000 to one, which is a lot more than the 1000 to one on a typical IPS panel. But OLED's ability to turn individual pixels off to display those true blacks makes the black pixels on a very good VA panel look more like a shade of gray. And when you combine that contrast with much higher HDR brightness, the difference in overall HDR performance between the two monitors is just night and day. The range of colors the monitor can display is important if you do some creative work, uh, but a wide range of colors also helps games and HDR content to look better as well. The QD OLED panel covers the entire sRGB and P3 gamut and almost the entire Adobe RGB gamut, which is actually a great result for a monitor. And then this VA panel just falls short in comparison. Now, some VA panels are a bit better in this regard, but I still haven't seen one that can match an OLED or a QD OLED panel uh, when it comes to color range. Now, whether the monitor displays uh, those accurate colors right out of the box uh, completely depends on the manufacturer. So that's not something that you can blame either technology for, but I do want to say that I've tested now several QD OLED so far and dozens of OLED panels and almost all of them included at least reasonably accurate color profiles out of the box. 
and so did this 342C. So it is almost perfectly calibrated. But that is really not the case for VA panels and the 343CQR is not an exception. It lacks the color range to do P3 or Adobe RGB properly, but it is not really accurate for sRGB either. Now uniformity will also vary per monitor model, but uh, due to OLED not having a backlight, it is generally better at uniformity. Uh, the 343CQR does well for a VA panel, but it doesn't come close to the QD OLED. Uh, the lack of backlight also means that a QD OLED cannot get backlight bleeds, so you don't have to worry about that at all. But for VA panels, it's all down to the manufacturer yet again. And the 343CQ is looking pretty well with almost no backlight bleed, but almost all LCD panels have at least some, while the OLEDs have none, so QD OLED wins here as well. Viewing angles are another clear win for the QD OLED, uh, with no real brightness or color shifts as you move around the monitor, and the 343CQR does well for a VA panel, but even the best VAs offer acceptable viewing angles at best. But where OLED completely humiliates VA technology is speed. So OLEDs and QD OLEDs have basically perfect sub one millisecond response times with no significant overshoot. Meanwhile, uh, this VA panel either has around six milliseconds without overdrive on average, with some transitions being much slower than that, or you can get it down to three and a half milliseconds on average at the highest overdrive mode, but then you get a lot of overshoot in some transitions. And this is a pretty good VA panel because most other VAs are much slower. Uh, as you can see here, the VA takes much longer to transition and clearly overshoots significantly for a while before hitting its target. But the QD OLED is just instant, and as a result, the moving image clarity on an OLED panel is just way superior. So MSI and everyone else just might market their VAs as one millisecond panels, but you don't really get a one millisecond experience, even if Technically, they're not lying because a single transition here or there might hit that advertised number because it is overall much slower than that. In terms of latency, the QD OLED wins again. Uh, the total end-to-end -end latency on a high-end system is about two and a half milliseconds faster than the VA, but this will also depend on the exact panel that you're using. So basically, in every single test so far, it just looks like the QD OLED is way superior to the VA panel. And numbers aside, that is exactly how it subjectively feels when you game on a QD OLED. A good VA panel is fine. I mean, I've never been a big fan of the technology myself, but it is objectively okay, and I do understand why some people like it, especially if you consume a lot of content or you game a lot and you really like contrast, so IPS panels were not an option before. But QD OLEDs are just way better. Uh, they're way faster, you get much better motion clarity, uh, colors look way better, and the contrast is infinite. And those are the things that people chose VA panels for uh, before OLEDs became a thing. But OLEDs and QD OLEDs are also not perfect, and they do have some issues that you need to consider and that you cannot see in any of these graphs. And the first one is the subpixel array. So regular PC monitors, including VAs, generally use a typical RGB pixel layout, but LG OLEDs, for example, add another white pixel to it, and these QD OLEDs use a triangle RGB layout. And both have a tendency to make text on screen uh, look a little bit off compared to regular monitors. A QD OLED specifically introduced some color fringing on the high contrast edges that are usually green and magenta, and that might be very annoying to look at if you work a lot on your monitor and if you need to read or write a lot of text. So it is definitely present and it bothers some people and some people don't mind it. Uh, I personally don't mind it as much when sitting at my desk and looking at the monitor from a normal distance, uh, but a lot of people are sensitive to it a bit more and it just 
disqualifies these QD OLEDs for regular desktop work. So you will have to make up your own mind on that particular issue. Uh, either way, it doesn't affect games or content. It mostly affects text on white backgrounds. And OLED panels also do have a bit of a flicker. So there is a brightness dip on every refresh cycle, uh, which is something that most users will never ever see or have to worry about. But there is still a small group of people that are very sensitive to this flicker and uh, might find OLED panels uncomfortable to look at. So if you find OLED TVs very uncomfortable, uh, this cutie OLED monitor will be the same. But a much bigger concern would be burn-in, which is inherent to OLED technology, so it includes QD OLEDs. Uh, burn-in can happen when certain pixels display the same thing for long periods of time, which again, won't affect games or other content, but a typical desktop or a taskbar can cause a problem. And there are things that you can do on a daily basis to avoid it, like uh, make sure that you don't leave it on a static image for a long period of time. And uh, most monitors, uh, including this one, offer different options like a pixel shift and pixel refresh to avoid it from happening, but it's still can happen. So I really do recommend that if you do decide to go for an OLED or a QD OLED monitor, you make sure that you pick one that includes burn-in in in their warranty. So if something does happen, you will be covered for a while. Uh, This MSI, for example, includes a three-year long warranty that includes burn-in, which is quite reasonable, but there is still the risk of something happening in four to five years. So do keep that in mind. So in the end, I think it is pretty clear that the QD OLED is the superior panel technology in pretty much every way, but it also costs more. So at the time I got both of these monitors last year, the 342C was $1,100 and the 343CQR was $600. So that was a big price difference. But now, QD OLED monitors have come down in price a lot, and the 342C is now $780 in the US, but it is still more expensive than the VA alternative. So, if your budget is very tight, a VA panel is a good option, but if you can stretch it a bit, and if you can spend a little bit more, it will get you a huge increase in speed and image quality. Now, that is all I have for today, but before I go, Let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this very different than usual video. Uh, If you liked it, do let me know. I always try to read and answer most of the comments you guys leave. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of my future uploads, uh, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.